But all these countries, we have problems with the borders. So why then pick and choose and exaggerate the issues with uh, China? There has been significant territorial expansion in the South China Sea, as evidenced by the frequent disputes between China and the Philippines Coast Guard around Second Thomas and Sabina Shoals. China has been resisting the Philippines' territorial claims by deploying its Coast Guards to the area. However, many people are unaware that Vietnam's island-building activities in the South China Sea are far more extensive than the Philippines. Why hasn't China expressed greater concern about Vietnam's actions? Moreover, why have Western media outlets largely ignored this issue? Hi, I am Fernando. I'm a Colombian entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience in China. And I've been sharing my insights on China on YouTube since 2017. And I have traveled extensively to both the Philippines and Vietnam. Through my travels, I have observed cultural attitudes and sensitivities that might help explain the differing relationships between these two countries nowadays. To set the stage, let's talk about South China Sea, why it is a crucial area for trade, for fishing, and for potential oil reserves. However, it is also one of the most contentious maritime regions in the world. Several countries, including China, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Malaysia, claim parts of this strategic waterway leading to frequent disputes and skirmishes between all of them. Malaysia has territorial uh, uh, integrity to protect as well. Well, we have problems with all, I mean, neighbors. Well, let, let me put it this way. Why this uh, obsession, the tendency to exaggerate the problem border issues with China when we in Malaysia or the Thais or um, Brunei or you know, Indonesia all have problems with the neighbors. The ex relation with Singapore is super excellent, with Thailand, with Indonesia. But all these countries, we have problems with the borders. So why then pick and choose and exaggerate the issues with uh, China? Do we have a problem? Yes. Do we think it's going to be easily resolved? No. Uh, but what is the mechanism? It's discussions, dialogue. Regional leaders have been grappling with the issue for decades, as you just saw. Since Obama's pivot to Asia, the U.S. desire to contain China has elevated the South China Sea's military importance. While the desire to use Taiwan as a direct counter to China has its allure, it faces significant obstacles, primarily that Taiwan is China's red line, and any such move would likely trigger a military confrontation like the world has never seen. Now, during Duterte's presidency in the Philippines, the relationship with China was relatively good. Despite existing territorial disputes, you know, the Sierra Madre was grounded at Second Thomas Shoal during his presidency, resupply operations kept on going, and fishing activities proceeded without any incident. So the question is, what has changed? Well, since Marcos Jr. became president, he has brought with him a baggage that has made it easier for America to manipulate him against China and to divide the Filipino population. This baggage has forced Bombong Marcos to abandon diplomacy altogether. The U.S. has seized this opportunity to intervene in the South China Sea dispute, exploiting Marcos's personal interests, on the one hand, and self-preservation, given his legal case in the United States, to the detriment of Philippine sovereignty and prosperity. This all began with trade disruptions, with the removal of Chinese investments in infrastructure, and the ramping up of anti-China rhetoric in their media, which has led to an obvious decline in Chinese tourism. Next up was the expansion of barracks around the Sierra Madre, which has been around since 1999, as we all know. The, P the Philippines has now also stationed yet another ship around Sabina Shoal this time. Four new military bases have been established in the country, bringing that total now to nine American military bases in the Philippines. Today, U.S. missiles and troops can move around these bases without any restrictions in the country. Additionally, there is a faction of local media that is ready to film and distribute incidents that depict the clash of forces. 
even when they prove the Philippines Coast Guard is the one violating rules and norms that we have talked about in other videos. Now, add to this that the U.S. surveillance planes are now present in the area at all times to also document these clashes. It is evident that a lot of love has been lost between the peoples of these two countries. The handling of the situation is designed to be escalated, to just follow orders from Washington because none of this makes sense. However, this starkly contrasts with China's approach to Vietnam's territorial expansion. Many people are unaware that Vietnam, not China, has occupied the most disputed outpost in the South China Sea. You heard that right. Vietnam currently controls between 49 and 51 outposts, depending on who you ask, across 27 features in the South China Sea. Now, in contrast, China has 20 outposts in the Paracel Islands, seven in the Spratly Islands, and also controls Scarborough Shoal. Notably, Vietnam is rapidly expanding its territory. They're aiming to build a thousand acres of new land on its outpost just this year. Now, one key factor contributing to China's more lenient stance on Vietnam's actions may be Vietnam's consistent respect for China's sovereignty, particularly regarding Taiwan. A fundamental principle in Chinese statecraft is the mutual respect for sovereignty. By honoring China's sovereignty regarding Taiwan, Vietnam has cultivated a more favorable relationship. Also, Vietnam's discreet approach to its island building activities in the South China Sea has also played a significant role. Unlike the Philippines, which frequently publicizes its disputes with China, Vietnam has maintained a very low profile, allowing for more private discussions and negotiations and avoiding unnecessary escalations. While Vietnam's construction efforts are substantial, they are primarily focused on features that it has controlled since the 1970s and the 1980s. This approach aligns with China's own activities during the 2013 and 2015 period. Ultimately, Vietnam's success in expanding its territory without facing significant backlash from China can be attributed in part to its deep understanding of how Chinese foreign policy works and its ability to engage Beijing in a matter that respects its interests. In China's view, the Philippines just does not respect China's sovereignty. The, the Philippines has demonstrated with the support for Washington's stance on Taiwan by hosting numerous U.S. military facilities and equipment on its land that that's the case. China perceives Marcos Jr. as colluding with the U.S. And, and with other foreign powers around the area to instigate a conflict that would involve Taiwan. This is something that Beijing strongly desires to avoid, as we've said about this many times. They want peaceful reuni unification, but this is going against the grain. Additionally, the Philippines' close alignment with the U.S. under Marcos' government suggests a lack of commitment to its own sovereignty, something that China cannot respect, really. So this provocative behavior uh, is pushing China into a defensive position, particularly because the Philippines is attempting to seize previously uninhabited or, or Chinese-controlled features like the Scarborough Shoal. This is a stark contrast to Vietnam's actions. Overall, Vietnam's approach has been much more strategic and sophisticated than the Philippines. As a result, Vietnam has achieved significant gains without having to face any backlash from the international community. All right, friends, if you gain any insight into the importance of sovereignty and diplomacy for China from this video, make sure to check this video right here where I explain the need for a new security architecture in and around the South China Sea. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.